Hello everyone, Michael back with another video. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to add, update, and remove rows in your SharePoint list from an Excel document in Power Automate. If you enjoy Power Automate, Power Apps, SharePoint, and Teams videos, feel free to subscribe because I'll be putting out more videos in those areas. And now for my intro. All right, so I'm going to show you how to add, update, and remove rows in a SharePoint list when you are importing from a Excel document. So previously I did make a video on the adding and updating the rows. I didn't make a video on deleting the rows and I had a lot of comments asking to show how to delete rows. So I will do that now. So basically when a row is deleted from your Excel sheet, it will also be deleted in your SharePoint list. So let's go ahead and get into it. I have an Excel table right here. Uh, make sure your data is in a table that will allow it to work with Power Automate. But I just have a few columns, first name, last name, favorite sports status, and a unique ID. In my case, that is worker ID. You may have to combine two rows if your data does not have a unique ID. You can concatenate two rows together, which would create a unique ID. But in order to do this, you do need a unique ID in your Excel table. So I already set up my SharePoint list as well. I have the worker ID, first name, last name. And I also did import a couple rows so I can show you guys the updating, the adding, and the removal after. Let's go ahead and navigate into Power Automate. And I will go ahead and create a new flow. So this is up to you what you want to do. You can either do an instant cloud flow if you want to manually click on this. I would recommend probably doing a scheduled scheduled cloud flow. Just have it run on automation. Let's say you want to update it daily. You can do hourly. You can do pretty much any of these options. So I will go ahead and name this Excel update, add and remove. And I will just have it run every day at 10 a.m. All right, so we start off with the recurrence action. Let me go ahead. And your next action that you want to do is list rows in Excel. Okay, so we want to choose the Excel online business, list rows present in a table. So this is going to go ahead and get all my data from the employee list. For the location, you want to go ahead and select your SharePoint list. If your SharePoint isn't listed there, you can also go ahead and copy the web URL up to your SharePoint site name. And you can also paste that in here and use as a custom value. That will also allow you to use that site. So for the document library, my Excel sheet is actually stored in my SharePoint under the employee document library. I recommend storing it in a SharePoint document library. It just makes it easier. I will go ahead and select employee document library for the file. I will just go ahead and select the file name. It is employee list. For the table, my table name is called employee. And to find that in your Excel, you'll go ahead, click on within your table, table design in the top. And then you will see on the left hand side, the table name. Okay, so if you are using dates in your Excel, you can set the date time format to ISO 8601, and that will import them in a date format. If you don't do that, sometimes it will do it as like a serial number, so that'll be like a five digit number, and you might run into issues doing that, so just be aware. And also, if you do have over a hundred rows in your Excel table, you want to go ahead and click on settings and then you want to click on pagination so you want to set this number equal to a value that is higher than the number of rows in your table because by default this list rows present in a table will only return 100 rows so if you do have something higher than 100 rows just be sure to activate this or you will be wondering where some of your data is because <laughs> that has happened before so the next action we want to do is get items. So we want to get the items from our SharePoint list. And I will go ahead and 
Click on my SharePoint site. Click on my list name. So my list name is the employee list. And same for this in the settings, you wanna to go to pagination and you wanna set this threshold to a value that is higher than the actual amount of items in your SharePoint list or else it will return 100 values. Okay, and then next we wanna go ahead and do an apply to each. So we wanna go ahead and go through each one of those Excel rows. So I will go ahead and click on dynamic content, body value from the list rows present in a table. So it's going to go through each one of those Excel rows and then perform the actions that I tell it to. Let's go ahead and click on the plus icon. So I wanna go ahead and do a filter array next. So we want to filter the SharePoint get items and we wanna see if we can find a match between these two. So if we do find a match, then I know I have to update that row because the row already exists in my SharePoint list. If I don't find a match, then I have to add the row because there's no match, but it appears in my Excel document, but it's not in my SharePoint list. So I need to transfer that over. Let's go ahead and do a filter array. We want to choose the get items body value. And then for the filter query, I want to go ahead and select from my SharePoint get items my title. So this contains my unique ID, that is the worker ID. Uh, I use the title column for this, so it will show as title, even though I renamed it to worker ID. And in my Excel sheet, the worker ID is my unique column. So we want to do if the title aka worker ID is equal to, and I'll go ahead and select the dynamic content. I'll look for a list present in a table and I will click on worker ID. So let's go ahead and navigate to another action and this will be a condition. So this is where I'm going to check to see if it actually found a match. So we wanna go ahead and choose value, click on the dynamic content for the function. So I wanna do a function here. And the function's pretty simple, it's just going to be length, open parenthesis, and then I wanna do the body list of items. So that's gonna give me the length of the amount of items that is returned in my filter array. It's only gonna be zero or one if I do have indeed have that unique identifier. So if it is equal to one, and I know the item exists in both of the employee list and the marketing list. So let's go ahead and do a apply to each. And the reason I'm doing an apply to each is because if I don't do it, the filter array can return multiple values. So it doesn't know if it only returns one or many. Even if it does return one, it's automatically gonna put this in and apply to each. So I'm just preemptively putting the apply to each here so I, it just doesn't pop up when you sometimes insert a dynamic content, it could pop up and you're like, why is this occurring? Just doing it beforehand. So we wanna go ahead and do the filter array. And then I wanna do the update item. So I'm going to choose my SharePoint site, which is marketing, the list name, employee list and then the ID. So this is going to be the ID of the apply to each one because it goes through the filter array from my SharePoint list. So the ID will be contained in the apply to each. So I will go ahead and click on FX. I will click on the current item for apply to each one. And then I will type in a hard bracket single quote ID. That's gonna get me the SharePoint list ID. All right, so in my title, I'm going to click on the this list rows present in a table. I will click on worker ID, because that is my worker ID. And I will click on first name for the first name. And I'm able to do this because when I highlight over these uh, dynamic contents, it looks at the items applied to each. And that is where I am getting my 
I'm going through each one of those rows in Excel. So it's going to grab that information. And then for the last name, I'm just going to fill all these in. They're probably going to have different columns here. So let's fill those in with the correct corresponding ones. And then just the status. Okay, so this looks good to me. So now we have to do if it is false. So this condition, if it doesn't find a match, that means the item wasn't created yet. So I will do a create item here. And we want to go ahead and create a new SharePoint list item. So the same site address, the same list. And then it will show up down here. I'll just add in the items down here. So this is my worker ID, first name, and I could probably type this in to be quicker. Last name. Favorite sport, and then just status. Okay. So this is the add and update section. So I will just go ahead and make sure this runs correctly, and then I will do the deleting part after. Let's go ahead and save and test this. I just get a warning about the filtering, which is fine, and I'll manually do it. So currently I have the worker ID four through eight already in my SharePoint list. So these should update, and then everything else should be added. Let's go ahead and run my flow. Okay, I can see that it is running correctly so far. All right, so it looks like the flow ran successfully. Let me go ahead and navigate over to my SharePoint list and I just refreshed. Let me refresh again. And it looks like they all popped up. I can see that these ones were modified and all the other ones were added. So it didn't create those duplicates for four through eight because they were already in the list. They just updated them and all the other ones were added. So that works correctly. And you can tell by, if you look at the created metadata column, if you don't see that column, you wanna click on add column, go where hide columns. And then we have the modified and created column. So I'll go ahead and show those. So I can see that the ones that weren't included were just created right now and the other ones are modified just now. So let's go ahead and go back to my Excel file. So let me go ahead and remove some of these items. So I will go ahead and remove employees one through four. I'll just clear those contents and then delete the rows. So when I do the deleting rows part, those will be deleted from my SharePoint because they no longer appear in my Excel document. And then we'll just update two of these for fun. We'll just do David Lee, let's say he likes swimming now, and Emily Davis likes tennis. Worker ID six and seven should update with this new information. And all the rest should just stay the same pretty much. Since I do have Excel in the web browser, it saves automatically. Let's navigate back to our flow. I will click on edit and we will add the deleting part. So I will go ahead and do a scope. So a scope pretty much just contains a bunch of actions in it just to make the organization a little better. So I will just say delete rows not found. All right. So to start this, we want to go ahead and get items. I just want to get the new list of SharePoint items that we created. So I will go ahead and click on the site address marketing. The list name is employee list. And then again, if you have over 100 items, just be sure you type in a pagination that is greater than the amount of items you have. And since I use my list rows present in the table above, I can just reuse that action again. So let's go ahead and do and apply to each. So I wanna go through each one of my SharePoint list items. So that's just going to be the body value for get items one. 
and then it's pretty much going to be like the inverse of what we've done above because we want to see if there's a match between the SharePoint list and a, the Excel. If there's no match from the SharePoint list to the Excel, then we have an old item in the SharePoint list that's no longer present in the Excel document. So we want to do filter array. And then I want to do list rows present in a table, body value. And then I will select the body value worker ID. So if this is equal to, and then we will do my title. And then I'll just hover over it to make sure it uses list applied each. So this is going to find all the matches. And then we want to do another condition. So this condition is going to look at the length again for the filter array one. So if this is equal to zero, then we don't have any matches from the SharePoint list to the Excel document. So we want to go ahead and remove that item in the SharePoint list because it is no longer present. So we will do delete item. I will choose my SharePoint site, the list name, and then for the ID, it is going to be the apply to each two. So apply to each two, let me go ahead and find it. And I will do question mark, hard bracket ID. So let's go. I accidentally clicked on something else. So let me do that again. So question mark, hard bracket, single quote ID. So that's gonna go ahead and delete the item that we are currently on that we haven't found a match for. So let's go ahead and save this. That should be it for the flow. I know it's been pretty long, but I try to explain everything out so users don't get confused on a step. I will go ahead and click on manually again, run the flow. So in this case, we should see the removal of items one through four, the modifications of items six through seven, and then the rest should just stay the same. So in the top half, it does the addition and the updating. And if you look closely, the apply to each only has 20 rows. Previously, we had 24, so it does account for those rows that were removed. And I'm just going to wait for this to get finished. It looks like it just succeeded. So let's go ahead and just take a look at the flow to make sure it ran correctly. And everything looks good. I'm just going to navigate down to the delete rows not found. So it went through the 24 items that we previously had in the SharePoint list. So it went ahead and deleted this item. So this item had the ID of four. And then if I navigate through, it should delete a few more items. So there's the next one. There's the next one. There's the other one. And that should be the four items it deleted. Let's navigate over to my SharePoint list. I'm just going to sort alphabetically on the worker ID. And of course that doesn't work because it didn't account for the numerical ones. So I just will sort on the other one. So I see we have worker five, worker six was just updated. So let's check the version history to make sure it works. Did switch over to swimming. Emily did switch over to tennis. So that works correctly. Uh, let's just check to confirm this fifth one didn't change anywhere. Nope, it's still good to go. And let's just look at my list to see if we have one through four. So we don't, it was removed from my list and I'll just confirm that by going to my recycling bin. And I can see that those four items were removed. So that is it for this video. I know it was pretty long. I did a lot of explaining, but that is how you add, update and remove rows in a SharePoint list from an Excel document. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you're able to follow along. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below and I will catch you in the next video.